This experience app is dedicated to all people who work on aerospace science and technologies. Oh, hi. Sorry. I was just roaming around our, our future home, you know, Mars. I wanted to talk about this today because it's fascinating to me as just a geek in general, but a space geek and somebody that loves what Elon Musk is doing with his companies. And he has a plan now to actually colonize Mars. Typical male, as my millennial cousin would say. This plan is kind of insane. And so I thought, let's dig into the data and see what the meat is of it and if it could really happen and how much it would cost and all that. So Elon has said he wants to to make Mars seem possible. That's kind of the idea of what SpaceX is doing with their Mars mission right now. They say they wanna go from early exploration to a self-sustaining city on Mars. So we're not just talking about astronauts landing on Mars, doing their thing like in the Martian. We're talking about people living there, uh, creating a new society there, creating a, becoming a multi-planetary species. Elon has said that if humanity doesn't land on Mars in his lifetime, he'll be very disappointed. Okay, Elon, I guess we'll do it for you. One more thing. And he thinks we can get there by refueling in space and by making the rockets reusable. Uh, they have this really interesting way of thinking about things and it makes sense because if you were to only take a plane once and then throw away the plane, the cost of that would be tremendously higher than it would be if you were able to reuse it. So a plane, a Boeing 737, comes in around $90 million, and if you put 200 people on it and only went once, it'd be really expensive for each person. Now, instead, you can get tickets from, say, San Diego to Denver for 100 bucks. So much, much cheaper than that $90 million split 200 ways. But point being, we've never thought about it this way in space travel. We've always thought once it's gone, it's gone. In fact, just recently we crash landed uh, one, of our, one of our space satellites on a comet that it had been observing, basically because it was running out of fuel, going out of distance, and we'd never be able to get the data back anyway. So it's kind of the way of life or the way we've been thinking about it forever and to Elon's credit the way he goes about all of his stuff is to rethink what's possible. So by reusing the rockets and making them lighter he argues that a trip could cost $200,000 uh, down from the maybe hundreds of billions or infinite cost that it is now since there's not even a plan or a way to get there. So sometime in the near future you could be trying to decide between you know a trip to Disneyland and Mars. Disneyland's expensive I don't know if you have kids if you've been there but it's it's expensive. But why go? Why go to Mars? I mean, look at this place. Who would want to leave? We've got everything we could want. We've got great weather. We've got all this life. But we may have to because this right now could be our sixth mass extinction event on this planet. Looking at the layers of the Earth, all of the fossils that scientists have found throughout the years, including all the species that are currently alive, 98% of them have actually gone extinct. So we're quite lucky to be here. And if we want to continue the life of our species, we need to figure out what to do because life here on Earth is going to come to an end for us at some point. So we need a plan to make it off this rock if we truly want to survive. So is it possible though? Could we really do this? Well, in 10 years, it may be possible to put the first human mission on their way to Mars. That's really optimistic, but it's not entirely impossible. Now, Musk doesn't think of SpaceX as the company that will do all of this. He said that my vision is for a fully reusable rocket transport system between Earth and Mars that is able to refuel on Mars. This is very important, so you don't have to carry the return fuel when you go there. And he went into a lot of detail recently on his SpaceX talk where they looked at the types of fuels that they could make and which ones to be more efficient and this and that. See, Mars actually has quite a bit of resources. It has uh, lots of gases, it has water, it has things that we can mine and use to create fuel and to live, essentially. Uh, whereas other planets and other places you may look at, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, a moon of Jupiter, they really don't have anything there. Even the, our moon basically has nothing, no atmosphere or anything. So Mars really is the best bet, and this might actually be possible. Elon is pretty crazy. But how long would it really take 
to get there. NASA has said it's six months or more just to go one way. And of course, it'd be incredibly dangerous. Who knows what could go wrong? You, everything could, you know, fail or, you know, it could mu take much longer than that. You could miss the orbit entirely. Thankfully, due to Newton and Einstein's theory of relativity, we we're pretty good at calculating these things. So we think we would be able to do it. But if you could refuel in space, then you could speed up so fast and then subsequently slow down so fast uh, that you would be able to get there in three to five months. I mean, in three to five months, you could get your beach body ready for summer. You could start a new blog. You could make half a baby. Uh, you could get a degree online and you could even walk from San Diego to Boston if you wanted to. That's 20 miles a day for 150 days. I don't know. That'd be, if anybody ever does that, let me know. I'd love to see the video. So Elon has said it would take six months to get to Mars if you go there slowly with optimal energy costs. Then it would take 18 months for the planets to realign. Then it would take six months to get back. Though he can see the travel time getting down to between three months and five months if America has the will. But will it happen? Well, I certainly hope so. Uh, as a lifelong geek, uh, as a kid, all I wanted to do was be an astronaut and go to space. So to see this happen within my lifetime potentially or within my son's lifetime would be amazing. Um, it would be something that I think would help us put perspective on who we are and where we stand in the scheme of things in this universe. Uh, but SpaceX has admitted they're really only dedicating about 5% of their resources on the Mars stuff. Uh, so right now it's really just more talk than anything. But if we could work out the bazillion science, engineering, ethical, legal, and funding issues, we probably could do it. I say, let's take it seriously as soon as SpaceX does. And Elon has even said, I would like to die on Mars, just not on impact. So I'm with him. I think that'd be a tremendous way to go out. Uh, not an impact, of course. So thanks for joining me on this journey. If you're new to the Data Geek family, click subscribe down below. Otherwise, click like and please share the video. Sharing the video actually does much more to help grow the community than anything else. So I really uh, appreciate you giving me your attention today. Hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, I'm going to be looking for my new house on Mars. Holy shit.